not a crossword editor. I'm a games platform engineer here at the Times. Uh, and this is a talk about how we uh, built a recursive BigQuery mapper to move our data around in GCP. Uh, a little bit of background. First, crossword went out in 1913. Um, and then in 1924, a crossword editor called it a sinful waste of time. He did not like it. Uh, it took up space in the newspaper. Uh, and then uh, Pearl Harbor happened, and the Times decided that it was a nice thing to include in the paper to give people uh, something uh, to look forward to when they uh, open it up. Uh, and then 1997, the crossword went uh, digital. It was released online uh, on the web first. And then a long time later, iOS and Android came around. And uh, eventually, we launched the Mini, which is a 5x5 crossword. Uh, today, we support all of these platforms, um, PDFs, uh, web, mobile web, Android, iOS, Kindle, and uh, Windows. So we have a lot of users spread across a lot of different platforms which uh, makes our infrastructure a little more complicated. The, hit, the background of this talk is that we recently did an entire replatform from what is essentially a LAMP stack on AWS to GCP. The Times as a whole is moving towards GCP, so this just follows in line with that. Um, it was a long, complicated endeavor where there's lots of different phases, lots of different moving uh, data around and uh, you know, launching new services and shifting traffic. And eventually, it came to look something like this. This is actually kind of outdated. Um, there's a lot more to it now. But um, we've got microservices. They're all written in Go. They all run on App Engine. Um, and our source of truth uh, is Data Store, which is a, uh, Google's document store um, with memcache in front of it. So the problem is, when we went from a LAMP stack to GCP with Data Store, we migrated from MySQL to data store, and we lost the ability to run comp uh, complex bespoke queries against our data. Um, data store is great, like give me the puzzle for this day, give me the progress for this user in this puzzle, but you can't run aggregations across the entire data set. You need something else for that. So the somewhere is data store, and the somewhere else that we need it is BigQuery. We really want to be able to do these analytics across all of our users or all of our puzzles and get those deep insights that we used to have. Uh, the first solution that we had, um, in GCP, you can launch a backup of data store and load it into BigQuery. Um, it's just a, you go into the admin, you click start backup, and then you let it run for a little while. Uh, every GCP, or every app engine project on GCP has a, what's called a default service. Just uh, one, you just have to pick one. Um, as it happens, our default service is our edge layer. So when we kicked it off, we stopped paying attention to it. And then a few minutes later, we started getting tons of alerts because our default uh, edge server, uh, the latency went from about 100 milliseconds to over 10 seconds. Because what GCP did was it launched all of these mapping jobs in the background on our default service to move this data around. Um, we found that it's incredibly slow, way too slow for our needs. Um, the default version is in Python. They have a Java version, but they don't really tell you how to deploy it. And we're a Go shop. We don't write Java. We don't, write, we don't want to write Java. Um, and it just does a uh, backup. It doesn't do anything fancy. And the thing we really wanted was we wanted streaming all uh, new data going forward, not just historical. Um, this is kind of the inspiration for the project. Um, whoever Captain Codeman is, they wrote uh, a Go version of this Python mapper. Um, which we considered using. Problem is it's third party, and then we'd have, probably have to fork it to extend it to do the things that we want. The one thing I want to call out is that in his readme, he says that uh, this was able to process about 1.6 thousand entities per second. So that was kind of like our baseline for performance for this project. So we're going to write our own. We're going to write our own mapper. We're going to deploy it to App Engine, and we're going to use this to move our data between Data Store and BigQuery. Uh, and we wanted it to look a little bit like this, where you, you can call an endpoint to kick off a job um, with a data type that you want to move around, uh, a start timestamp and an end timestamp. So you just do bulk loads of like, uh, you know, a month's worth of data or a day's worth of data. Um, that's kind of what the endpoint looks like. You, uh, it looks for that path, and it accepts a get request and calls that load course function. Um, Real quickly, we found out that so much data is being moved around that you can't do this in a single request. 
Uh, App Engine has a hard-coded 60-second uh, timeout on an HTTP request from uh, just the outside web. So that didn't work. So we needed some kind of fan out system. So a request comes in, usually from us. Uh, we query for all the keys in data store, not the entities, just the keys. Now what we're going to do is we're going to publish those keys out to PubSub. I don't know if you were here for the talk yesterday, but PubSub is basically GCP's message broker, but it really is um, the way they describe it, just a sponge. It's a place that you send all of your data to be processed at some point whenever some subscriber is ready to do it. So we post them out in batches of, say, 500. Um, what the PubSub is going to do is actually we've set up our service to not only be the producer of these messages, we've also set it up to be the consumer of all of the messages. So when, the, uh, when we publish out to PubSub, they're actually going to flood back into the service that we set up, and it's going to use the keys that it uh, accepts on the ingress to grab the entities out of data store and put them into BigQuery. So now it looks something like this, where we kick off the job, it starts publishing out keys to PubSub, and then the keys are going to flood back into the service. Uh, App Engine is going to see all of these requests coming in, and it's going to automatically and very quickly scale itself up to handle the load. And it's just going to keep scaling as long as it has to. And now that we've got all of these instances, they can go and grab all the data that we need out of data store and put it into BigQuery. And it's pretty fast, but it's not fast enough. And the problem is we found that when we're loading a lot of data, the initial HTTP, HTTP request that we used to kick off the job only has 60 seconds. And we found that that 60 seconds was sometimes not enough to publish all of the keys we needed. So that request would die. Um, not all the keys would be published. All the rest of the jobs would finish up. All these app engine instances would go away, and the job is incomplete. So we needed to figure out a way to fan out even more. Um, and what we found is that PubSub is great for publishing messages and assuming that they'll be taken care of eventually. Um, kind of just a fire and forget system. Um, what we wanted was something with a, with a little more um, control uh, about how we can use it. And that's what task queue is. It's similar. It's, they're, they're almost interchangeable in some places. Um, but task queue gives you a lot more control over how your data is handled. So the new algorithm that we came up with is that if a request calls for a range of data that we've determined is too large, what we want to do is we want to chunk up that time range into smaller time ranges, publish them to task queue, and then we're basically going to do the same thing. So we post them to task queue. Uh, we ingest those task queue job tasks, essentially, um, use the new date range to query for the keys, publish the keys out to PubSub, and the, the requests come back in, we scale ourselves up, use the keys, same thing we did before. Um, and in GCP, to, up, to set up a, a task queue, all I have to do is add this YAML. Um, the one thing I want to call out is that the rate, um, task queue has a maximum uh, post rate of 500 per second, so if you put um, you can put as many messages or tasks on it as you want, but they'll only flow back out at a rate of a uh, maximum 500 per second. And they have retries and everything. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, if we decide that the uh, date range is larger than, say, one hour, we're going to create a publisher, uh, initialize our, uh, or sorry, if, if it's less than an hour, we're going to initialize our publisher and just publish, publish the keys straight up out to PubSub. Otherwise, we're going to have to start enqueuing them onto task queue. Um, we give it uh, an endpoint path, um, the total start and end date uh, for the entire query, and the chunk size, which is one hour. And that's kind of what this looks like. It's going to um, uh, create the path and just start uh, creating these post tasks and putting them onto task queue um, in smaller chunks of the original time range. Um, and the great thing about this is that if we were going to use PubSub again, we would have to, there's a little bit of overhead with that. We'd have to create new endpoints because, uh, yeah, we have to create new endpoints. We'd have to create a struct for the payload that comes in. We'd have to have like encoders and uh, decoders for the messages that are coming. Whereas all the data that we really want is just these start and end timestamps. 
Um, and all we had to do was add uh, the ability for this endpoint to handle post requests, and bam, it's the same thing. Uh, so now we've got App Engine posting to task queue, which then posts its task back to App Engine, which scales up a little bit, which then reposts all of their, ta um, their keys out to PubSub, which then flood back in. So it, it scales, it scales, it scales, it keeps scaling itself as long as it has to. So now it's really fast. In our benchmarking, we found that it can load things in a big query at a rate of 25,000 uh, keys per second. Uh, and it's actually, we found that it's too fast. Um, BigQuery has a 10 megabyte per second stream limit, uh, which we would blow through very quickly uh, since this thing is basically infinitely scalable. Um, so we actually, uh, one of the reasons we use TaskQ is that you can actually turn down the rate uh, very easily. It gives you that really fine grain knob to say how quickly you actually want your data to be uh, processed. So we turned it down to uh, one per second, one date range. Um, and that shut up all the alerts that we would get uh, whenever it was trying to uh, load data too fast. And here's kind of what it looks like in the logs. Um, see at the bottom, there's a get request that just says, here's a start timestamp and give me all the data between then and now. And then the task queue post requests are coming in afterward with chunked up time ranges. And if you click on one of them, you can see that at the bottom, uh, it queried for all the keys within that uh, time range, and it published all the keys out to PubSub. This one published 97,000 keys in about 40 seconds. Uh, and then on the other end, uh, when the uh, PubSub request comes back in, uh, it had a, a request, it had 500 keys in the payload. Uh, it grabbed 500 scores in this case, grabbed them out of the data store, put them into BigQuery. Um, and this is just what the, uh, oh, um, so like I mentioned, we wanted to be able to handle streaming uh, new data into BigQuery. So a solve happens whenever you finish the game. Um, so when, you, when we detect that you've solved the crossword, we're going to publish something uh, called a score. The, the score just has some summary data about the game that you played, how long you played, you know, did you cheat, whatever. Um, and that is going to, uh, uh, that's published by another one of our services, and our BigQuery service is a subscriber to that topic. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to take your score, put that into BigQuery, and it's also going to use the metadata from the score to grab your progress, which is the basically summary, summary state of your board, um, put that into BigQuery for analytics. And it's also going to grab all of your what we call progress commits, which are snapshots that we take of your game over time. Um, and the reason this was such a problem for us is because these uh, snapshots, in particular, they all have a full copy of your crossword board with a ton of other uh, metadata involved. So it's a very, it's not a trivial thing to load in bulk uh, across services. Uh, the other really cool thing we were able to do is we're able to give it a user ID, and we can actually go back in time and load all of the data for a particular user. Uh, we've used this a lot when someone will email us and say, hey, I've been doing the crossword online forever, but I only see that I have like a 99.4% solve rate, as in, in all of the archive that we have, um, I'm missing one or two puzzles somewhere, um, and I really want to go back and finish them to get that 100% solve rate. So we can actually use this to load all of that user's data going all the way back in time, load it into BigQuery, and query and figure out what puzzles from 2012 that this person was missing. This is kind of what it looks like. So we set this up on a nightly cron. Um, every day around 3 a.m., um, it's going to go and load all the progress scores and progress commits for the previous day. So you can see uh, every day at 3 a.m., it's going to scale up to about 60 instances on its own, do all the loading, and then instantly scale back down. Um, actually, what you can see is that this, uh, it's kind of evenly spaced, except for the second one on the right. Um, that one is actually kind of anomaly. And what happened was another engineer ac actually ended up adding two fields to our progress uh, struct which meant 
that it no longer in the code matched the schema in BigQuery. So uh, BigQuery was rejecting every single request. Um, so you can see that it just started to stack up uh, the queue size in PubSub. But the great thing about PubSub is that it's super resilient. And it's going to hold on to all of these messages for at least seven days. And it's just going to keep retrying them again and again. And right there at the end, you see that I fixed the issue by adding the fields in BigQuery. And then, bam, like it flushed them all back uh, out of the queue into BigQuery in one big, uh, one big swoop. So some of the cool things that we've actually been able to learn about our users, or maybe um, uh, a lot of these things we had suspected, but it's great now that we actually have the data to back it up. Um, so we, we segmented users into novice who have completed less than seven puzzles and experts who have played more than seven puzzles in the past month. Um, and as you can see that Novice users spend way more time solving the puzzles than advanced users. They spend about 40 minutes on average, um, and expert users spend less than about 35. Um, almost half of all novice users have to reveal a puzzle at some point to get it solved, um, whereas about you know, only a quarter of experts. And uh, novice users abandon the puzzle a lot. They just, 54% uh, just don't finish uh, their puzzles, and whereas experts will finish about 80% of the time. And you can kind of see this in graph form. Um, so you can see that novice users in the top left give up very quickly. Um, and it seems that like after you get to about the 50% uh, board filled state, you pretty much guaranteed to finish it. Um, whereas experts, they finish, if they start a puzzle, they either abandon it right away sometimes, or they're almost guaranteed to finish it. Um, and you can see that on the bottom left, uh, novice users are way more prone to cheating than expert users. And so you can see that the Saturday is the light blue on the top. Uh, people are much more likely to cheat on a Saturday than they are on a Monday. If you don't know, crossword puzzles get harder throughout the week. So Monday's the easiest, Saturday's the hardest, and uh, Sunday is generally not as hard a puzzle. The clues aren't as hard, but it is much bigger, so it, uh, has, it's difficult in that way. Uh, yeah, so now we can segment the users into the uh, solve quantiles. Um, the gist of this is that if you can solve a crossword puzzle in about seven and a half minutes, you're in the top 1% of all solvers across the world. Um, and if you can do it in 30 minutes, you're still top 50%. Um, and here you can see how the difficulty goes up throughout time. So uh, the first day of the week is Sunday. You can see Sunday's a bigger puzzle, so it usually takes people about an hour to do. But Monday is a much easier puzzle. Only takes people about 16 minutes. Um, and these are solves without reveals, so people who solved it and did not cheat. Um, and we can also compare quantiles across time. So this is a chart that compares uh, one mini puzzle uh, of today versus the same uh, day of the week last week. Um, so the yellow is last week, the blue is today, and you can see that last week's puzzle was apparently way harder than today's puzzle. And I just want to give a shout out. We are hiring. We have a lot of open positions in all sorts of technologies, but uh, we write a lot of Go and we do a lot of cool things at the Times. Thank you. Is there a reason that you can't use the task queues for the places in the code where you use the pub sub? No, there's no reason. We just, uh, when we started out, we wanted that kind of infinite scalability. Uh, Captain Codeman, third party, looked at exclusively used task queues. Hi, what is your feeling of AWS versus GCP? Um, I haven't had a chance to interact with AWS as much as GCP. Um, this, 
definitely isn't an argument to say that GCP is better than AWS. Um, the takeaway is just that our, the, the legacy LAMP stack that we had was not performing the way that we had, that we required anymore. Um, and we wanted to leverage the new technology of GCP, uh, serverless, uh, you know, uh, microservices, um, all the other, you know, hot new technology. Um, but the nice thing about GCP is really App Engine. App Engine is a really, really easy platform to develop on. Um, and a very, uh, has a lot of really advanced tools. The logging is very advanced. Um, you get uh, like structured logs. Um, and you get Stackdriver for free. So we like it in th those respects. Uh, how do you, do you use Go Routine within your um, poll from the data store? And how do you ensure that 60 minutes timeout is enforced within the, every request? Uh, we number? don't enforce it. Um, App Engine itself uh, enforces it. Um, do we use Go routines? Yes, to some extent. Um, but we usually find that they're not necessary. Um, the last thing we want is messing with a bunch of uh, concurrency primitives within our code. Um, and the Go servers are already handling every request in a separate Go routine. Uh, it's my understanding that the architecture is supporting at, uh, at least one, so there may be a chance of duplication. So right. how do you maintain item potency here? Um, we essentially, there's no good way to dedupe data when it gets into data store. Um, we've come to terms with that. Um, you essentially just have to be careful when you query to uh, query across unique keys and use group buys and distincts. Hi, I'm not 100% sure like why when you are loading it to data store, you cannot also load it to BigQuery. Is there like a reason that it's so decoupled? Well, we wanted this to be an offline system. We wouldn't want to be putting essentially a backup uh, within the hot path of our service. We like to keep latency as low as possible, especially because um, we release a new puzzle at 10 p.m. every night. Um, and you'll see a massive spike in traffic, and we definitely don't want uh, to interfere with that by, it was essentially a backup uh, offline job. Hi. Uh, your thoughts on using Go versus Java or C++ for your internal development there? Uh, we are very big fans of Go. We've developed a lot of tooling around it. Um, we've developed uh, the drone uh, App Engine plugin, which is written in Go. Um, we find that the tools out of the box are really good in terms of profiling, memory management. Um, just recently, we used uh, PProf tools to track down a memory leak that we were having. Um, so in that respect, uh, Go is very, very useful for very quick application development. Um, as a whole, uh, the New York Times does use Java and Scala to some extent, but Go has become the language of choice for, I would say, most developers and most teams at this point. <laughs> 